Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I know this is a praising church. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. That's what we came here to do this morning. Didn't we came to praise him? We came to magnify him. We came to glorify him. We came to exalt his name. Didn't we? Come on, I didn't say praise me. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's good. That's like that really good for me, but I want us to praise the Lord in here this morning. Hallelujah. It is because of him we are here this morning. Amen. Amen. It is because of him we live and move and have our being. Amen. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Pastor Terry and I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. I see some new faces I haven't seen before. And I'm grateful to God for the opportunity that he's given me to come in this morning to be able to bless you. I hope that something I say will be an encouragement in your life. Because what I'm going to tell you is coming straight from the word of God. Amen. And the word of God is, is there to is here to encourage us, to build us up and to strengthen us along this journey we call life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So so this morning, I, 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 I would that you would go with me to the book of. First Corinthians. Chapter number 10. Now, I heard I heard I heard Esther say she was going to she was going to read her favorite her favorite passage and, and my favorite passage is found in this scripture this morning amen and and I don't know about you but in this season where I'm at now God is God is using that particular word that he placed in my life some eight or nine years ago to 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 make life real and relevant in this season that we're in right now and I'm going to read it from the message bible this morning but you can follow along in, in your bible this is the book of first corinthians chapter number 10 and we're going to read from verse number 11 to 13. and my bible reads these are all warning markers danger in our history books written down so that we don't repeat their mistakes our positions in the story are parallel they are at the beginning and we at the end and we are just as capable as messing it up as they were don't be so naive and self-confident. You are not exempt. You could fall flat on your faces as easily as anyone else. Forget about self-confidence. It is useless. Cultivate God confidence. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God is faithful. God will never let you be he will never let you down. He will never let you be pushed past your limit. He will always be there to help you come through it. And Father, this morning, I yield my members to be used of you. I pray, God, that you would allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to activate itself in me now, God, that as I speak, I may speak as the oracles of God, the very anointed of Christ. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your anointing, God. I pray that this morning, God, it will break and destroy the yokes of bondage over the lives of your people. Even as I speak, God, I pray that you speak, that they don't hear me, but they will hear the words of the Spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. I yield to you, great God that you are. Have your way in me, have your way through me, have your way in this place and in the lives of your people. I give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. If you will look at your neighbor this morning and say, check your manual. Come on, look at your next neighbor and tell them, check your manual. Amen. You know, I, I'm going I'm going to I'm going to talk a, a, a little bit about some cars this morning. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about some photography this morning and, and even about some phones. You know, it's just something that's familiar to you so that you will understand where I come from this morning when I tell you to check your manual. But well, how many know that everything that has been created or made has an owner's manual? You know, sometimes we, we, we don't recognize it. And I, I guarantee you that if I was to ask any of the children in here how a car works, they would they'd be able to give me some kind of some kind of information and they don't even learn know how to drive at this moment, right? But they will tell you that you, you open the door, you get in the car, you turn the key, it starts, you press the gas pedal and you drive off and you go where you want to go, right? And, not, and us that are able to drive or have vehicles or even even as I said, I bring it down to our cell phones. You know, our phones that we we have that we receive, they came with a manual. 
They were made by whether it's, whether it's Samsung, <laughs> you know, or like an Apple phone like me. I'm an Apple man, you know. I, I didn't really want to say that Samsung word, but that's like bad words, right? But, <laughs> but you know, you know, the word of God says that we're the apple of God's eye, right? So I, I'm an Apple guy. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But but nevertheless, anything that has been made has a manual. And a lot of times we, we pick up the products and we use them, but we don't take time to check the manual or we don't take time to read the manual, right? And then we go about using the thing and we think that we know everything about it because we are so familiar with it. We know that it has to turn on and when it goes dead, we have to plug it in and charge it. We know that when we want to make a call, we have to go to a certain place or we have to press this app to get here. And, and we are familiar with those things, but these phones are packed with so many features that if you would take time to, to check them out and to read about them, we would, we, would, we would get a greater use out of the products that we have, amen? And, and the same thing happens with, with our cars. Our cars have lots of features and, and lots of different things in them that, that we don't know about because we never take time to, to, to check the manual. And, and it's only when, when certain things happen that, that we wanna go back because we can't figure out. We start to scratch our heads like, I know this should be able to do this or do that, but I don't really understand how it works. And then we begin to go and start to seek information. And the thing, and, and this morning, I want to tell you that the same thing happens to us in life as human beings, amen? Or we have a creator, and, and, and he gave us a manual. And, you know, I talked about the car, and, and this morning I, I took out my, I took out the, the, the manual from my car, right? And just so that you, so that you recognize, everything that I need to know about that vehicle out there is written in these pages, amen? And, and... So, so when I, when I want to know how, how the headlights work, because I might have put them on low beam and, and then I got in the car and they turned off. And I was like, why did it turn off? Because I didn't know that it had an automatic feature. The only reason I would know that is when I begin to look in the manual. <laughs> and it tells me that, yes, if you leave the lights on, but when you open the door, they'll automatically turn off after a while. Right? So that the battery doesn't drain and it doesn't deplete the charge out of the, out of the vehicle. And, and, and I talk, you know, I'm, I'm a photographer at heart and I, I had, look, my, my manual's still in the, in, in the package. It hasn't even been opened because I'm so familiar with cameras and stuff. I didn't even bother to open a manual and I know that I've been using it, but I bet and I guarantee that somehow I haven't been using it to its greatest potential, amen? And, and, and that's my story for you today. We, as people, we have not been operating to our truest potential. And one of the reasons why we haven't been operating to our truest potential is because we haven't picked up the master's manual. We haven't taken the time to check the manual that was given for us, for us to learn how to travail and to go through life. Amen? And, and as, we look at, as, we look, as we look at 1 Corinthians this morning, we will see that, that the Word of God tells us that these were all written down as warning markers, danger in our history books, written down so that we don't have to repeat the same mistakes. And so many times in life, we, we go through life and we look at people and we will see that they went through this struggle and we were like, okay, I've seen them do that, so I'm going to try not to do that too. But we never really get to know the inner workings of why they did that. And, and how many know that we have an adversary who, who tries to play on our minds and cause us to do things outside the will of God? But if we begin to get into our manual, we will begin to see that there's, there's things written in here that teaches us and shows us how we can resist the enemy and he will flee from us, Amen. And we don't have to go down the same road that they went down. We don't have to make the same mistakes that they made. But we won't take time to check our manual. Amen? I, I'm so reminded of, uh, because I'm in the automotive field, I'm reminded of, 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 of a, a person that, that got a flat in their vehicle. And, and they came into the dealership and they were frustrated and complaining like they went to change the tire and they didn't have a spare. But they didn't read their manual. For had they read their manual, they would have seen that they had a tire inflator in the back and some and some tire foam that all they had to do was spray it into the tire and then fill it up with air and they would have sealed the tire until they get to a place where they can either get the tire repaired or get the tire replaced, amen? And, and that's what happens to us a lot of times as we go along our journey in life. We, we wait till we get into some situations or some circumstances that, that, that will trouble us and, and then we, we get kerfuffled. <laughs> We get, we get perplexed, we get confused because we don't even understand that if we had checked our manual, we would have had the answer for the problem that we were facing in that season, in that moment, amen? Because how many know that everything we need in life is in this manual? 
Amen? If, 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 you, don't, if you don't believe me, you can, you can look at 2 Peter verse 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter verse 1 and, and 3, and I read from the New Living Translation, says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of his all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. We wouldn't know that unless we check the manual. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, check your manual. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and the reason I want to encourage you to continue to check the manual because there's coming a season and there's coming a time in life when we're going to need to depend upon this manual. Because the Bible tells that perilous times shall come. But if when the perilous times come, we don't have to panic. Because we know the God that we serve, amen? He's the God that said, I promise to supply your every need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You wouldn't know that unless you check the manual. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I just want to encourage you this morning that we can continue to go through this life. And yes, there are going to be times of uncertainty. There are going to be times of trouble. Storms are going to come. But we know that when the storms come and the winds blow, we have to know who in, on whom we stand, right? We got to know that our anchor is sure, right? And our anchor and our rock is Christ. He is our very rock. He is our very foundation. He's our everything. I don't know about you this morning, but he's my everything. And when I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank God for blessing me, for saving me, for keeping me. For, for sanctifying me onto himself. I can tell you that there was times in my life when I wasn't thinking about him, but he was thinking about me because he wrapped his loving arms around me. When I was in times of frustration, when I was in times of depression, when I was, when I was going through because of life, life, life seemed to catch me by surprise. Amen? I, I, I had a beautiful wife and, 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 and she bore me five beautiful children, but one day she decided she didn't want no more. <laughs> and, and then I had to deal with with, with, with that spirit of divorce that tries to wreck us. And, and, and the reason I, I, I think I allowed it to happen is because I didn't fight. Because I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hold on to my mind to let me know that I can fight and I can hold on and I can fight the good fight of faith and that God will bless me and he can restore, he can, he can change, he can transform anything, but we just got to put it in his hands, amen? But, but when, when, the, when the depression came and, and the frustration came, I told you that my favorite verse of scripture is 1 Corinthians 10, 13, because God allowed me to go there. And he said, no test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. So he allowed me to know that I wasn't out there by myself. Sometimes we get into a lonely place and we get into a pity party and we, and, and we oh me, oh my, I'm going through this. And, and then we get all downtrodden and we get all frustrated and, and we feel like, Life has just taken every bit of life out of us. The enemy has destroyed everything that we stood for or we wanted to believe God for. But God said in his word that you're not facing anything that others didn't have to face. But he said, all you have to remember is that God will never let you down. And when I saw that, I was like, okay. And I, and I, began, to, I began to say, okay, God, you said you would never let me down. You would never let me be pushed past my limit. And, and one of the things that I learned is that if God takes you to it, he's able to bring you through it. Amen? You just got to trust him. You just have to believe him. You just have to lean on him. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I'm leaning on the Lord. I, 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 some things come and I don't even understand them sometimes. And, I, and sometimes I still get frustrated, even though I've been checking the matter, right? But I haven't been really deep enough in the matter because I, too, I'm guilty of not being in the manual every day like I should. I too am guilty for not picking up the manual and searching it out before things happen. Because they tell us that, you know, it's, it's hurricane season now, right? And you know what they tell us? To be prepared. This is how we are prepared for our storms of life. By checking the manual. You know, we might go out and buy some corned beef and biscuits. <laughs> we might go out and buy some sardines and some bread and we might put them in a the little stash there for when the storm season comes. But the word of God tells us that we need to, to hold fast to this word, right? And, and if you don't believe me, you can look at you, you can look at Joshua. Joshua chapter number number one and verse number eight. And the reason you're hearing, again from the New Living Translation, study this book 
of instructions continually. Meditate upon it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you, be, will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. I heard Esther say this morning that, you know, she was studying for the test so she could pass, so she could get her treats and her snacks. So, you know, I, I, I come to learn that, you know, that girl loves her belly bad. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and the word God tells us that where our heart is there, our treasure will be there also, right? So my girl likes her treats. And, and, and we might laugh and, 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 and think it's funny, but we, we like treats too. We like, we like good things. And the word of God tells us that we have a, a father who will withhold no good thing from us if we walk right before him. And that's just like studying the test so we can get it right before him, amen? And so I chuckled when I heard her said it more. I said, like, she, she's, she's getting all in my message already. Like, okay, Lord, I know we're on the right path, you know? Because, because, because that's how we find ourselves in life sometimes. We miss it because we don't, we don't check the manual. I'm encouraging you this morning. Everything we have need of is in this manual. The creator, our father, our heavenly father, wrote this manual from the very foundations of the earth, from the very beginning. And everything that's written in here is to help us in to, through every season of life that we might face. In the beginning, God, right? In the beginning, God, he set it all up for us. But then we were disobedient. We didn't follow the instructions. And we allow ourselves to be tricked. But then our, 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 our big brother Jesus said, nah, I can't let it go down like that. So he came into this world and he came to redeem us back to our Heavenly Father. And that's what, it's, that's what this man is all about. That we were once sinners. We once failed to make the mark. We once failed to understand the workings or the inner workings of, of, of life. As I would say, we failed to understand the, the things that were in, in the way the car is supposed to work or the way the phone is supposed to work or the way the camera's supposed to work or the way whatever it is that you have was supposed to work. We missed it because we didn't take time to check the manual, but we wanted to just dive in and to use it because we were so excited to have this new thing or this new toy. I'm even reminded about when we purchased some form of, a, like a bookshelf or a, a bed or something, you know, it comes with a manual, but we, me, we men, you know, we, we say we got this and we go get the screwdriver and the hammer and the, and the drill and we, we just rip the box open, we throw the manual to the side and we dive in and we start to put this thing together, right? And then when we finish, we see some extra screws and we start to scratch our heads like, all right, where does, where does this go now? And it's only till we go back to the manual that we recognize that we missed a few things along the way, amen? So this morning, I'm encouraging you. Don't let life take you by surprise. Get into your manual. I can tell you that nothing that's happening to us in life is going to take God by surprise. You know why? He wrote this manual for our life. This is our roadmap. He wrote it. Whether you want to believe it or not, everything you need in life, as the word told you this morning, pertaining to life and godliness is in this manual. And if you want to find good success, it told us to study it, to meditate upon its word, that we can understand it. It's instructions for living. It's instructions in righteousness. It's instructions in holiness. I could tell you another story about, you know, people that, that they drive their cars and the check engine light will come on and they will ignore it. Remember the word of God tells us earlier this morning, right, that they were warning signs. We miss the warning signs and, and the check engine light will come on the car as a warning that something is malfunctioning or something is getting ready to malfunction and go wrong. And oftentimes they will see the light come on and they would ignore it, right? Or the light will come on and it might go off and they will say, ah, it was just a little glitch day, and they went off. And they would ignore it and they will continue to drive. And then the next thing happens is what? It will break down somewhere along the side of the road and then they have to send it in by the record, amen? And then what happens? Now they are spending more money because they could have they could have checked the manual and see that they all they had to do was just take it before because they had a warning. Amen? Amen. And a lot of times in life we see the warning signs. You know, like me, I was being hard headed because they tell me, you know, I have I, I was I was suffering blood pressure, but I said, Lord, you made my body. You know every intricate detail about it, and I know that by your stripes I am healed. But I wasn't doing my part, right? I wasn't exercising. I wasn't eating right. I wanted to still eat the pigtails and <laughs> and the and the 
and the uh, fish cakes and, and, and all the stuff that I felt like I wanted to enjoy, right? But it was, but it was, it was, it, and it's not that these things you can't eat, right? But it's because we have to be careful what we put into our bodies, you know? And, and if we're going to eat those things, then we got to make sure that we're working them off, right? You know, they, they, we, they say that the older folks, the older generation, they, didn't, they weren't sick and nothing was going on with them and they ate all the fatling and they ate all the cracklings and they ate all the sauce and they ate all the stuff that we complain about that say, everybody's saying you can't eat that now and they drank all the, they drank all the morby and this and that, right? But look at the difference between them and us. They walked for miles or kilometers as you would say, everywhere they went, right? Or they rode a bicycle, they, but they, so they had, they were exercising, they were always moving. But we go to work, we come home and we sit down in front of the TV box and we, we watch Netflix and movies all day long and, and, and we eat the stuff and then we don't get up and we don't go get a, we don't get no exercise at all. We don't take care of our temple, right? And then when we pray and God don't move, we get frustrated. But it's all in the manual. He told, he told us everything that we needed in this manual, but we've been ignoring it. So this morning, I'm encouraging you to get into the manual, right? Because just like the car was given signs of trouble, the person ignored the warning signs. And the only way for, 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 for them to really know what's going on with the vehicle, with why the light came on, it has to come into the dealership and we have to hook it up to a diagnostic computer to find out what the symptoms are that it's having, right? We have to check it to see what is going on on, on, the, on the inside of it. And a lot of times we ignore those signs and we get to a place where we don't, we don't check the manual to see what we need to do. And all they had to do was see that. It says get to the dealer as soon as possible. So now it comes in and it gets hooked up to the computer and we're able to see. Because even though I have this manual that tells me how it works and what's going on with it, the dealership has what we call the service manual, amen? And that would tell us what the symptoms are that you have it and give us a direction on how to do it. So when we get sick in our bodies, when we have things facing us, the, the, the adversities of life and the things facing us, we can check the manual. And this has an Old and a New Testament. I tell people it has the main manual and it has the, the service manual. It has it all, right? Because in the, in the first manual tells us and gives us instructions and then the second man of the New Testament fulfills it all, right? Brings it all together. And, and that's how it works. We have the, 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 the owner's manual the, you know, that we can read and see how the things work. But then there's a service man that tells, the, tells, the, tells them the, the, the creator, the manufacturer gave the, the service technicians the, the insight on how to make it work again, <laughs> right? And I looked at that in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. And it says, for the word of God is alive and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. And it exposes the innermost thoughts and desires. Just like the car had to be hooked up to the computer to get in there to see what it was causing the symptoms. The word of God tells me this morning that the word of God would expose our innermost thoughts and desires. That when our check engine light comes on, when our warning signs come the word of God is able to pierce through that, right? And take us to that place where we, we can get a better and a deeper understanding of what's happening. And the only way that's going to happen is when we check the manual and get an understanding of what is happening and get the instructions and the answers. Because again, everything we need pertaining to life and godliness is in this manual. Amen? Amen. So, 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 so I continue to encourage you to check the manual. Check the manual. Everything we need is in there. I'm going to continue to tell you that. Check your manual. It's important in this season that we're in, in this season that we're heading into, right? The world is talking about wars and rumors of wars. The world is talking about drought and famine. And we know that the end times are wrapping up, right? But we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, right? Because he said that he was not willing that any should perish, but that all of us should come to repentance. What does repentance mean? That he just wants us to turn around, to take, make a turn around. And I know sometimes we used to say to make a 360, but no, it's a make a 180. We, want, we don't want to turn around and come right back to where we were, but we want to just turn around and go in a new direction, a different direction. And the power of the Holy Spirit, 
He said that I put my treasure in you, that the treasure will be in these earthen vessels, but the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. So he knows how to get us back on track, and it's called revival. And I believe that revival is coming to us unexpectedly, in a way that we're not even looking for it, and it's coming. I can tell you that he's reviving me. He's restoring me, right? And the word of God says that he will restore unto us that which the canker worm, the palm worm, and the locusts are stolen in Eden. He's going to bring us back to that place where we can stand before him and to be held accountable. We have heard the instructions in the manual. We listen to preaching all day long. But I encourage you, don't just take what I say. Check it for yourself. Verify that it's in that manual. And the word of God says that it is there to keep you. It is there to deliver you. It's there to heal you. It's there to set you free. You don't believe me? Take an account. Right? The lady, there was a lady that we read about. We heard her story all too familiar, right? She ran around to doctor and, and this body and that body and everybody trying to get healing and, and all she tried, it wasn't working, right? But one day she heard about the master and she said, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I could be made whole. What happened? God activated faith in her. The word of God tells us, right? Our manual tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's how we build our faith, amen? And that's what it's going to take for us to, to make it through this season that we are coming to. We are going to have to stand on our most holy faith. We are going to have to believe the word of God for what it says. And we're going to have to believe God for who he says he is, amen? He says, I am that I am. He, there's, there's, there's nothing else that, that we can say to describe that I am, that I am. I am what? I am your doctor if you need a doctor. I am your lawyer if you need a lawyer. I am your deliverer if you need deliverer. Amen? So the great I am is telling you this morning, check your manual. You know, check your manual. Now, I can tell you, in, in, in the very, very first part of that, it says, these are all in 1 Corinthians Chapter 13, verse 11, verse 11 says, These are all warning markers, danger in our history books, written down so that we don't repeat their mistakes. God is warning you this morning. There's coming a season and a time when we may not be able to get to this word. But I heard there's, there's one of the songs says, right? Thy word, O God, have I hid in your heart. In my heart, that I might not sin against you. We're going to we're going to need to learn this manual so good that we gotta hide it in our hearts because there's going to come a season where we're not going to be able to pick up the phone. We're not going to be able to get to our Bibles, but we're going to be able. But we could be laying down, paralyzed, feeling stiff. But once it's in us, we're able to recall it and say, God, I know that you're a God who saves, a God who heals, a God who delivers. And you said, by Jesus Christ's stripes, I am healed. Not going to be healed, but I'm healed. And, and when we know his word and we stand on his word, I believe that God will do great and mighty things in us. I share this great brief testimony with you. I was, I, was, I was in the house one night and my sinuses was just bugging me out. Just, I mean, for three days, my nostril was clogged. I was trying to push and breathe. And all of a sudden, I began to see the drops of blood on the tissue. And I was like... This thing ain't moving. I'm like, and I can't move. And it's, it's, it got so uncomfortable. And I just stood up and I was like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I read your word. You was, you was, you were, you were with your disciples passing by this tree and, and it presented itself like it had fruit. And you, and you, when you went and there wasn't none, you cursed it from the root. And when they were passing back, they was like, Master, the fig tree that you cursed, it dried up. And he said, and you said, have faith in God. I said, well, God, I'm standing on that word and I'm standing on that faith right now. And I curse whatever it is that's causing this trouble in my face and my nose. I curse it from the root right now. And I tell you that I took one in here like that. And when I did that, whatever, the whole blob that was clogging my nose and causing all the sinus pressure, it flew in my throat. And then I went, oh, and it flew out on the floor. And it was a, it was a blob like this big of blood and and, and some tissue and so I picked it up and I scooped it into a bag and I took it to the doctor because I was like what is this you know and he was like well you know you had some you know the pressure was building up and you had some polyps here so it was causing the blockage and and I say God I thank you because it was so uncomfortable but, but we gotta just stand on our on his word and stand on his promises and he is there to heal us he is there to deliver us 
Now, the word of God tells us, if any sick among you, it didn't say go to the doctor. It didn't say run down the street and check this body. Go say, it didn't say go get grandma's remedy. It said call for the elders of the church. And they would pray the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith would heal the sick. And if they committed any sins, they'd be forgiven them. We wouldn't know that unless we check this manual, right? Not saying don't go to the doctor. But we got to go to God first. We got to trust God at his word. And when we begin to exemplify that kind of faith, faith in God moves mountains. Amen? He said, you can speak to the mountain and it shall be moved. Now that, that thing in my nose was a mountain to me because it was, it was overwhelming me for, 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 for a few days. And I couldn't shake it. I couldn't get it to move. And, and all the mountains simplified. Reckon, um, simple, see the word, uh, Father, I thank you, even now. But all that, all that does is a mountain is something that seems impossible for you to get over, right? Because it's so big. That thing looks big before you. But, but, but remember, when, it's in, when you put it in God's presence, that thing that was big becomes small because God is greater and bigger than anything you can face. Amen? And that's how we got to go to God. That's how we have to believe God. And the only, reason you're gonna, the only way you're going to learn that is when you find yourself checking the manual. So I encourage you today, check your manual. Wherever you find yourself at in life, in this season of life, Check your manual. Little children, you can check this manual too. It tells you that Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, right? So, so, so you're in here too. Don't think that it's just for us adults. He says, suffer not little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom. He wants, he wants to bless you too. You are blessed. You are loved. You are favored. And, and for us adults, if you will remember that from, from way back, you know, we used to say he got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world. In his hands, he got the whole world. In his hands, he got the whole world in his hands. Right? When we can remember that, there's nothing. As he said, no test, no temptation will come and overtake you. Nothing. Nothing. No thing. No thing. Nothing. Right? But we don't believe him. So today I say, Lord, help our unbelief. Like the man said, right? He said, Lord, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. There's some things that still lurk in the back of our heads that we have reservations about. We got to let them go and release them to God. Amen. Let God be God. Amen? Amen? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Let God be God. If it's too big for me, it's just right for God. That's how I face it now. And I encourage you to face it in that same manner. If it's too big for you, it's just right for God. Little becomes much when we place it in the master's hands, right? So we may feel like we're struggling and we only got a little bit, but put it in his hands. He cares for you. He said, cast your cares on me because I care for you. That's in his manual. <laughs> I'm not telling you not anything that's not in his manual. It's all in his manual. The only way you're going to find out is when you go into that manual and seek it out. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for your presence, God. I thank you, God, for even encouraging me now to continue, God, to check the manual, God, to continue to search it, God, to continue to search your word and your scriptures, God, because in there there's life, in there there's hope, in there there's purpose, in there there's everything that we need, God. So thank you, great God, that you are, that you will continue to speak into the hearts and the minds of your people, God. Speak to us like never before. When we lie down, God, when we rest, God, begin to speak to us in a new way, God. Begin to open the eyes of our understanding, God, that we may be enlightened, God. Continue to build us up in our most holy faith, God. Continue to encourage us, God. Continue to let, let your servants, God, come and, and pour into us that which you have written in your word, God. But give us the strength and the ability, God, to go and to seek for ourselves and to search for ourselves. Because you said that he that seeketh shall find, God. He that asketh it shall be given to them, God. And he that knocketh it shall be opened unto them. So, Father, today I just pray. I just pray that your word... Your word will continue to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. That you will continue to go before us, God, and make every crooked way straight. That you will continue to pour your blessings upon us like never before, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You said in your word, God, you told us in this manual, God, that we are loved, we are blessed, we are healed, we are delivered, we are free. And you said, whom the sun set free. 
is free indeed. Help us not to be again entangled with the yokes of bondage, God, but help us to walk worthy before you, God, a life poured out before you, God, a life fulfilling before you, God, that we will compel others to come and to share in the good news of Jesus Christ, that he died for us, but that he rose, and that he's sitting on the right hand of you and he's interceding on our behalf. Father, I thank you, great God, that you are. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for pouring your blessings upon your people this day, God. For you said the blessings of the Lord maketh us rich and addeth to us no sorrow. God, I thank you, God, that they, will, that they may prosper, God, and be in health even as their souls prosper. God, that's what your word said to us. So, Father, anybody, God, under the sound of my voice that's dealing with any kind of sickness or disease or any kind of oppression, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would begin to lift it from them now, God, that they will begin to feel the presence of the Almighty God, that they begin to feel the power of the Holy Spirit, God, lifting that thing, God, that's been trying to frustrate their purpose, God, letting them allow them to see and to know, God, that you're still healing, you're still delivering, and you're still setting your people free, God. I give you praise in advance for doing it, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God, whatever the need is for this house, I pray your blessings upon it now, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray revival in these spirits, God. I pray revival in these soul, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you that it's done because it's according to your word. You said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I decree and I declare that it is so. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I give you the highest praise. I give you the highest praise. I give you the highest praise. And it's hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyhow, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah.